Good morning. Great to see you here. Wonderful to have you. Listen, we are going to study today. We're going to get some music. We're going to get some word in our system. Just before we do that, would you bow your heads with me? Let's invite the presence of the Lord with us as we worship. Father in heaven, we just, we're grateful that you have been with us all week. We thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. We thank you, Father, for ushering us into this worship service here now. Father, send your spirit to be with us. We beg this now, Father, for it would, be, it would be a loss for us to gather together in this fashion without your power. We ask now, Father, that you'd be with us. This we pray in your Son's name and by your Holy Spirit's power. Amen. As I mentioned, it's real good for you to be here with us. We're glad that you're here. One of the things we're really happy about is all the prayer requests that you keep sending in so that we can be active in praying for you. Continue to send those in. It's wonderful to see what God is doing, so continue sending also in the answered prayers, what God has done so that we can continue to pray the prayer of thanksgiving to God. And additionally, as we support you through prayer, or song, sermon, ministry of other kinds, if you would like to support us, support Trinity in a tangible way, uh, you can do so in four ways. You can give online, just go to our website and go to the online giving button, it's an easy process. You can also, uh, wherever you are, just from your phone, uh, cash app uh, the church and uh, we'll be able to get uh, your funds in that way and your support in that way. You can also mail it in. If you mail it in, uh, please, we ask that you not send cash. Uh, but you would mail a money order or a check. Uh, and you can also just provide it by being here in person when we have our worship services. Our worship services are Saturdays at 12 p.m., including today. So you can join us there even after uh, this early morning service. Well, we've got a word here that will pose the question, how does God clean me up? How can I get right? But just before the word, we're going to have some music that will have you reflect on what God has done for you. I'll be right back. What a friend we have in Jesus. Come with me. 
Welcome back. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that music as much as we did here. Uh, listen, let's bow our heads. Let's get into the word. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the word that you have provided for us so that we can remember, we can know, we can be sure there is nobody like you, that you will save people like us. We thank you, Father. Now, Lord, as we reflect on your word, we ask that your Holy Spirit might be present to be a translator of that word in our hearts so that we might know according to your will. This is our prayer in your son's name, by his saving blood and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder if you would join me at uh, the book of Psalms, book of Psalms, collection of Psalms by David and other composers. If you join me there, Psalm 119, Psalm 119, I, I'm going to attempt to take a look at the first 11 verses this morning briefly for us. Psalm 119, and what I love about this psalm is that David is speaking here like you and like me. 
Uh, David has got a problem that, that he's always getting in his way. He, he knows God's law, but he doesn't always follow God's law. He knows God's path, but he sometimes creates his own. Uh, he knows God's will, but, but he's also got a will that fights against God's will. And, and he finds out that, that more than every now and then, uh, though God said A, David will say B. Though God says up, David will say down. And, oh, God goes right, David will go left. And in his frustration, he has this, this narrative here in Psalm 119, in this discussion with God. Here's what he says now. Verse 1, this is. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk not in the law of the Lord. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, meaning in God's way, who walk in the law of the Lord. And, and, and he's, he's speaking about them folk. He does not put himself in that category. He's speaking about them folk. They are blessed. Uh, they are happy who do God's will, who walk in his way, unlike folk like me, who have found that I don't always walk in the way of the Lord. He goes on, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and seek him with a whole heart. Here is David, who knows the testimonies of, of, of God, uh, uh, but does not always uh, keep these testimonies. And he says, blessed are those folk who keep them. And blessed are those folk who seek him with their whole heart. That, that they, they're praying to him, and they're, they're worshiping him, and when they wake up, they think about him, and when they're in their house, they think about him. When they go outside, they think about him, and when they see other people, they think about him, and when they meet obstacles, they still think about him, and when they're happy, they're thinking about him, and when they're sad, they're thinking about him. When they get back home, they're thinking about him. When they're eating, they're thinking about him, and before they go to bed, they're thinking about him. They're seeking him with their whole heart. Blessed are those folk. And he points the finger at them because he knows he is separate from them. They do no iniquity. <laughs> Meaning, I, David, do iniquity. And you only need to check Psalm 51 to talk about the iniquity of David, where he speaks about that. They also do no iniquity. They, they walk in his ways. And I don't walk in his ways. These folk are different than I am. I, I wish I was more like them so that I might be acceptable to God. So after these three verses of, of, of bemoaning uh, his separation from those who do God's will and follow God's law and walk in his path and don't do iniquity and uh, always are obedient and, and, and uh, chasing him and seeking him with their whole heart. When he, when he looks at that separation between them and him, always doing wrong, always end up somewhere else, always in the dark, always guilty, always heavy. He changes the narrative now after making this comparison, and he starts to talk to God himself. Verse 4, thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. David knows what God expects. Yet, David is saying there's a difference between me and those people who keep what God is saying. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Not every now and then. Not just when we come to church. Not just when we're having worship. But every day when no one else is there from the church. David says, you got to be diligent. You got to walk like a Christian. Just like you sing like a Christian in church. You better walk like a Christian. Look like a Christian. Sound like a Christian. Respond like a Christian when you're out in the world. But David's got a problem. He does not always do that. And he admits to God. You've commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Verse 5, oh, oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Oh, that, that the, the way that I walk would be a way of walking that would keep your statutes. I got a problem. I, 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 it's, it's like Paul saying, I, I, I want to do good, but I end up doing the wrong thing. And the wrong thing I don't want to do, man, that's the thing I end up doing. 
And Paul comes to the place where he says, I find now a new law that every time I go to do good, evil is present with me. This is Paul, centuries later, essentially reflecting on what David is saying here. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed. That means David right now, all the way up to verse 6, is ashamed that he's not kept God's law. He's not walked his path. He's not, done the whole, he's not sought him with the whole heart. He's not done everything that God expects, even though God has commanded it, and David knows the command, and he has no excuse. He comes to the realization, I'm ashamed because I've come up short again. I wonder if you can feel David. I wonder if you can relate to David. That you know what God expects of you. But at the end of the day, when the dust settles, God's over here and you over there. I wonder if you can relate to David today. Well, there's a shift. There's a shift. Verse 6, then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. David feels ashamed. He knows he's not done right, but he knows that if I just turn around, if I just do what you're saying, if I just have respect of your commandments, if I just obey your statutes, I won't feel ashamed anymore. And, 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 and you'll accept me, Lord. I know you will. I, I, but I feel so far right now. I'm begging you, even though I'm this far, please don't forsake me utterly. And then David asked the question, presumably of the Lord, in verse 9, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? How do I get from verse 1 of not following God's law, of not walking in God's law, verse 2 of, of, of not keeping his testimonies and not seeking him with the whole heart, verse 3 of, of doing iniquity? How do I get... From there to where God wants me to be. Wherewithal, verse 9 says, shall a young man cleanse his way. And, 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 and before God can answer, David does. And I wonder if you can today. David does. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way. God doesn't even get a chance to get a, a word in edgewise, David says, by taking heed thereunto according to thy word. He's not saying read the word, because reading the word is what get David to understand that God has certain expectations. And David's told us in verse 6, that he, verse 4, he knows what these expectations are. So reading the word is not enough. He's not talking about understanding the word. David understands, which is why he feels horrible, that he is not where he's supposed to be. He knows the difference between the commands, the precepts, the judgments, the testimonies. He knows what God is expecting of all of that. So he understands. So this is not about reading the word or just merely academically understanding the word. What David is talking about, he says is taking heed to the word. In fact, to be correct, taking heed according to thy word. Where thy word says to go, I should go. When thy word says to stop, I should stop. When thy word says to stand still and know that I am God, I ought to do that. When the word said, praise ye the Lord, I ought to do that. When the word says, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. I ought to do that. David says the only way for a young man, the only way for any man, the only way for a believer, man, woman, boy, or girl, to get right with the Lord is to do according to the word. 
Now, the question is, what does David then need to do so that he will do according to the word? Uh, verse 10 helps us out here. It says, with my whole heart have I sought thee. I, 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 I'm, I've been seeking you all this time. Now, I haven't caught up all, uh, every time. I, I, I seek you, and when you reach out to me, maybe I go left or maybe I go right. And, and we're, we're, we again uh, cross, cross lines and, and misalign. But, but I've been seeking you. Uh, I've been seeking you. And, and, and what I want to do right now, God, is I want to seek you with the whole heart, just like the folk that he talked about in verse 2. And they that seek him with the whole heart are happy. With my whole heart, verse 10, have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. You ever ask God this? God, just give me a different set of desires. Uh, David says this in, 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 in uh, Psalm 51. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and, and restore a right spirit within me. Cause me to desire differently than I desire right now. Take the old ways out and put your new ways in and, and let me just follow, let me just want to follow your commandments. And then David ends where we will this morning with a defiant, with a confident, uh, 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 put a stake in the ground. This is what I'm going to do. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And this is the key here now. It's not just a hope. David says, I see what the problem is. See, I knew academically the word, but it was not in my heart. I, I could tell you what God was expecting, but it was not in my heart. What was in my heart were my desires and my wishes and my way. And I was tempted and I fell along those ways. But if I ever get God's word in my heart, when the test comes, when the challenge comes, when the trial comes, I'll be able to stand because I've got God's word, not on a, in a Bible, on a shelf somewhere, but alive in my heart. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I may not sin against thee. I wonder if you'd be as humble as David in acknowledging where you are. I wonder if you'd be as bold as David to tell God, I know I'm wrong, and I know you're right, and I wonder if you would be uh, uh, as audacious as David to put a stake in the ground and say, you know what, I haven't been doing all that I should be doing by God, but here's a stake in the ground. From now on, thy word have I hid in my heart, so when the trial comes, when the test comes, I'll be able to stand with my chin out, my chest up, knowing I followed God's way. I wonder if that's a commitment you can make this morning. I wonder if today that can be a resolution in your heart. I pray, I pray that it will. Let me pray for you. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, all honor, praise, and glory belongs to you. We thank you, Father, for your saving grace. We ask now, Lord, that you would be with all those who are hearing you through my voice, all those who are listening to this word, the challenges that they face that have brought them far away from you. We ask, Lord, that you might, in your love, pull them out of darkness and into your marvelous light. We beg now, Lord, that you might allow your word to not just seep, but just fill up their entire being so that when the test comes, when the challenge comes, by your word being in them, alive in them, they may be able to stand. I pray for these, your people, as I pray for myself. Save us, Lord, despite us. 
This is my prayer in your son's name, by his saving blood, and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. I sure am glad that you joined us this morning. I hope that this word finds a place in your life. I would encourage you to continue sending in your prayer requests to us. We want to continue to pray for you. And when God does something for you, share it with us as well so we can pray the prayer of thanksgiving. God loves you, wants the best for you. Let us know how he's working that out in your life. I encourage you to uh, join us as well. 12 p.m. today is our divine hour here at Trinity. And uh, we ask that you would come by. You can come here physically and be with us. We're back in church. If not, you can join the stream. And if you can't make the stream at 12 p.m., you can watch the stream at any other time. We've got wonderful music. Uh, we've got uh, scripture readings. We've got, we've got so many things happening. The word through music, the word uh, through sermon, the word through reading. Uh, come and join us. And uh, at 5 p.m. today, we'll be taking a look at the book of Romans. 5 p.m., you can join us on Zoom. Go to the website, look for the 5 p.m. Sabbath afternoon class, and join us there as I uh, take us through uh, the, the end portion of the book of Romans. If you want to know about God's plan to save us, the book of Romans is exquisite in providing that. And if in the middle of the week you need a pickup, you need to reconnect, join us for Wednesday night prayer meeting. It's not just prayer, but it certainly does include prayer. So you can bring your prayer requests there. And we're studying right now about how to find victory in the middle of the battle. Join us there. I'm glad that you could be with us today. God bless you real, real good. I'll see you soon.